Hi everyone, welcome to Best Recipes with Sharon. I am excited to bring this video to you today featuring one of the hottest items on the market. They're so much fun that everybody wants them, but they're a little pricey to buy. So why not do your own for a fraction of the price? I'd like to introduce to you Hot Chocolate Bombs. DIY, yes, do it yourself. So stay with me and we can make this happen. Let's have some fun in creating these. And I'll go ahead and show you different flavors and different ways of creating designs on them. And I'll also share with you what my ideas are for making sure that these turn out perfectly. Now these are a few ingredients that you can use for inside of the chocolate bombs. And then you also need to make sure that you've secured a really good quality chocolate. And I'm using a silicone mold that has the round shape like this. And they're very flexible, as you can see right here. That works to your advantage. And even though you could use hard plastic molds, these silicone molds are absolutely essential as far as I'm concerned. It really makes your life so much easier and a lot less chance of breaking them, especially when you go to remove them from the mold. And you can buy these in most stores, but also it's available online if they're sold out. Go ahead and get yourself some and let's get started. So I'm going to start by melting some chocolate and like I said, a good quality chocolate. So this is milk chocolate here and then I'm also going to use some white chocolate. Turn the stove on high, put a pot of water on the stove and put a bowl on top to create a double boiler effect. And turn the heat down a little bit just to have it simmering and add your chocolate to the bowl and melt it slowly. Careful not to burn yourself on the steam as you're placing the chocolate in there. And again, it's melted slowly because you want to make sure that you temper your chocolate and that it doesn't melt any more than just melted and no more than 90 degrees. And I stopped heating my chocolate at about 80 degrees. And I took it and removed it from the heat and finished stirring it until the pieces were fully melted. And it's the same process for both the white and the milk chocolate. Temperature is important if you want them to set properly in the mold. Overheating it can actually cause your chocolate to be too soft and then it may not set properly. And so stir it until it's nice and silky smooth like this and a little bit shiny. Now I'm going to go ahead and place it in the molds and show you how to just use a spoon to smooth it around the edges like this, making sure that you get about a tablespoon in each mold and making sure that they're up on the sides well so that it doesn't all pool in the bottom. And it's very important to make sure that the sides are thick enough as well so that they hold firmly when you go to put them together. And I'm using rounded spoons to smooth this out. And then they need to be taken and chilled in the fridge for at least 15 to 20 minutes. Now check these ones out. I sprinkled the bottoms quite generously with white chocolate. Then I added dark chocolate sprinkled back and forth. And then I finished it off with milk chocolate. And I smoothed it out gently, not to merge the chocolates together, but to create a marbled effect. And this is what I ended up with. Something a little more artistic actually. And so easy to make. Now don't worry if they didn't turn out perfectly the first time, you can still patch it up after you take it out of the fridge. You can see all the holes that have happened or the spots that you have made a little too thin. So go ahead and I use a paintbrush to touch that up with a little bit or you can still use the spoon to top that up. And you'll come out of the mold just perfectly like this if you make sure that it's thick enough. So after you've touched it up you'll need to chill it again before pulling it out of the mold. And if the outside comes out shiny and smooth like this, you've tempered your chocolate perfectly. And the inside will be rough, but that really doesn't matter at all. And you remove them from the silicone by pushing up from the bottom like this, and it just pops out so easily. And it's nice if the edges come out nice and smooth, so that it goes together quite easily. But if there is a few chips in it or a little bit of irregularities, don't worry about it. They can still be fixed. Get ready to put these together now. 
And because I already have hot water in the pot on the stove from melting the chocolate, I'll use this to heat my plate as well. Now, what are we stuffing the inside of these with? Of course, there will be lots of marshmallows. These will help to create the special effect that you want from these bombs. So you can use white ones or colored ones. I will also be using mini peanut butter cups, mini mint chocolates, and chunks of caramel chocolate bar. and even pieces of Rollo. You can use French vanilla cappuccino mix. Carnation hot chocolate mix with mini marshmallows already in it. And also Rollo hot chocolate mix. And you don't want your plate too hot, just lukewarm. Use the plate to melt just the edges of these chocolate balls. Then turn it over and fill it with whatever you desire. So this one's going to be milk chocolate, one teaspoon of milk chocolate mix, a bunch of mini marshmallows. Then do the same thing with the top, just lightly melt the edges and then gently touch it together to seal. You can use saran wrap to hang on to it with, or you can use gloves, or just your bare hands. This one is one teaspoon of hot chocolate mix, chopped Rolos, and of course lots of marshmallows. Slightly melt the edges of the top and place it on, and gently secure it. And then just top it off with a Rolo, because this one is a Rolo chocolate bomb. Now let's do a mint one. Move along quite quickly because it's the same procedure to start with and then you just add what you want in the middle a little differently but this is again one teaspoon of milk chocolate mix. Add mint chocolate pieces, some colored marshmallows here and top it up till it's nice and full and then of course just cap it off the same way as you did before and top it off with a mint piece and you know that that is your mint chocolate bomb. Once again, moving it along quite quickly because this is the same procedure, only this one's going to turn out to be caramel. So there's something for everybody in every type of taste bud, but they all have their own appeal. Another idea is to use French vanilla cappuccino. And again, it would just be one teaspoon of this instead of the milk chocolate mix. And of course, you can add whatever you want inside and decorate as you wish. Use whatever type of chocolate shell you want for this. It's quite interchangeable actually. You can put whatever you like on the outside and whatever you want on the inside. And that goes for the milk chocolate on the inside as well. It really doesn't matter. It's whatever you feel would go together nicely. Go ahead and do it. And you can just do the chocolate bombs and not decorate the outside if you want. Having said that, if you like to do the decorating, the sky's the limit. You can do whatever you like to make these look nice on the outside as well. And it's a good way to use up your leftover chocolate. Here I'm using the white chocolate and I'm coloring it with food coloring, red and green, to make it look a little bit Christmassy. You can make these look like Christmas bulbs and do whatever you want back and forth. You don't have to be perfect with it. Uh, you'll see how it looks in the end when it's done and it actually doesn't look too bad. Certainly go ahead and explore a little bit and do what you feel that uh, might look nice. And if you're using food coloring and white chocolate, use the paste so that it mixes well. Now when serving these bombs to your family and friends, you can put them in a mug like this and pour hot water over it if you want. It's an alternative to the milk if somebody has lactose intolerance. They would also have to watch what they put inside, of course, and what type of chocolate. The hot water will make it not quite as rich. You're using milk, the temperature is quite important. 
You don't want to boil your milk. You don't want it to burn or scald. So you just heat it until it reaches about 180 to 190 degrees. That's it. And take it off and pour it in and you have a perfect hot chocolate. As you can tell, I prefer the hot milk. It makes it so rich and creamy. And all these different flavors that when they explode in your cup and make it into a hot chocolate, it's like a warm hug on a cold day. And there's so many rich flavors to choose from. So you could say that if you want to level up your hot chocolate, this is what you need. These bombs are great for entertaining any time of the year. And for any reason. So now you can see why it's a hot selling item in the stores. But you can now do it yourself. So go ahead and I hope you found this video helpful. And thanks for watching today's episode of Best Recipes with Sharon. And I hope you make these and enjoy them.